Hey guys, it's Dan Strong with Excel VBA is Fun. We have another interesting question today from Jagan. Uh, the, basically, the question was, hey, I want to make a user form with a text box that has the slashes automatically put in it. The, the date format that he wants to use is mm slash dd slash yyyy. So let's take a look at one method. Of course, there's lots of ways to do these things, but let's look at the way that I would do that. Let's go ahead and hit Alt F11. And we'll go ahead and go into the Visual Basic Editor. And uh, you see I've got a brand new book. It's called Book 1. So I'm going to click this button here, Insert User Form. You can also use a drop down in the Visual Basic Editor. Again, to get to the VBA uh, is Alt F11. So we're going to click Add a New User Form here. And I'm simply going to add one text box using the toolbox here. And click, and that's all we need. Let's click, let's double click in the text box here. I'm not going to mess with renaming it or anything, but right off the bat, you could either use the you could either use the text box one change event, but I'd rather use the key down event, and I'll tell you why. The change event you can't actually capture which key was pressed, and that's going to become important if we need to capture the whether it's a backspace or if it's just a regular key. So let's just forget about the change event and let's go a little deeper into the key down event because then we can use this variable built in called key code. A key code is going to give us uh, whether it's the enter key that was pressed or the backspace or we could really uh, figure out any key that was pressed but we don't really care about most of them. We just care about the backspace because that will become important in a minute. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first of all if you hit play right now it doesn't do anything. It is capturing all these keystrokes but we haven't told it to stop and analyze it or do anything with that information. So let's close out of user form and double click on our text box one more time. So the first thing we need to do, and let's just figure out, uh, let's see, whether it is, uh, the number of characters is two, then we need to add a slash. That's kind of our first step. So let's create a little space. I'm going to hit enter a few times. I'm going to say if the length, using the len function, so if the length, open parentheses, of me, me meaning user form one, if me, the length of me dot text box one tab in parentheses so if the length of that is only two characters long then and hit enter and let's go ahead and do our end if so we don't get an error later so if the length of this text box value is equal to two so there's only two characters then we want to add a slash to the date so let's go ahead and we'll, we'll say me dot text box one equals me dot text box one and so we're going to use the ampersand we're going to join whatever is currently in there with you guessed it a uh, backslash here and this is a string of text so you got to put it in quotes so let's see what happens if we do that when we run this it's going to analyze the key down every time a keystroke is typed in here it's going to say hey is there is this two characters long or is it one or three then we'll ignore it so let's hit the play button see what happens so I'm going to type one, two, and now I'm going to type another one. Aha! So it added uh, whatever the to two characters, it added an, a slash to it and then accepted the keystroke at the very end of the code. So that's really interesting. So let's exit out of that and let's go back into by double clicking on our, our text box one. The next thing we want to do is what if it is, let's see, uh, let me just type it here, 12, 18, 18, December 18th of 2018. Uh, so let's see, if it was two, then we add a slash. And if it's one, two, three, four, five characters, then we add another slash. So we could say if this is two or the length of me.textbox1 equals five, then we take whatever it currently is and add a slash to it. So let's try that. So I'm going to say 12, and I'm not going to type a slash, I'm going to type a 1. 18, I'm not going to type a slash. Again, I'm going to type 18 for the year 2018. Okay. And uh, actually, I should have put 2018 because he wanted the Y, 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 Y. But the concept is actually identical because of the length of the text needing to be 5. Uh, 2 for the month one slash and then two more is five. 
So the next thing we need to do is we need to account for if somebody wants to use the backspace key. And that's where it gets a little bit trickier, but bear with me, we're gonna get through that as well. So here's where we're going to evaluate whatever the key code is, because the key code is actually gonna be a numeric value that represents whatever key combination or keys that you typed in, whether it's a letter or a number, or even a, uh, a function key uh, or something like the inner key or the shift key. So let's go ahead and analyze that really quick. I'll create a little bit more space here. I'm gonna say if uh, this variable right here is called key code, if key code equals, and let's see, VB key, let's see, backspace, then, I don't think that's right, VB key, back if i hit down and ah, so if it capitalized automatically then this is a built-in variable so we're good to go if the key code equals whatever the numeric value for a backspace which is right here then we're going to do something special so let's go ahead and just capture that and see what happens so, so if that is a backspace we need to analyze uh how many keys there are so let, let's 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 look at this right here right here in the immediate window this is kind of a scratch pad so let's see one two three four so let's say i'm right here i'm right here 12 18 or 19 i hit a backspace now right here when i have one two three four keys here, when I have four characters in there and I want to hit a backspace, I want it to hit two backspaces for me. I want it to automatically take away the slash so I don't have to worry about it. So if the length of me.textbox1, we've already done the length, so I'm not going to explain that. If that's four, then we want to take um, whatever me.textbox1's value is and we want it to be equal to, let's, well, we want it to be equal to the leftmost two characters only, right? So let's use the left function. We're gonna say left, and we're gonna say me dot textbox one, comma, how many characters of the left do we want? We want the leftmost two in, in uh, parentheses. And let's just start right there and see what happens. I'm sure there's gonna be some more steps. So if it's a backspace, we're gonna do this. And really, we if it's a backspace, we don't want it to do this part. So let's, we're gonna say if it's a backspace, do this. And then we're gonna say else. So for everything else, I'm gonna hit tab to indent that. So for everything else, I do the regular, hey, we're adding stuff. And this is, hey, we're subtracting, we're backspacing. And then of course, we have an if, we have an else, we need an end if right there. Otherwise, we'll get an error because it's syntax is bad. So let's try this uh, just to bring you back to where we're at. If the length is four, then we want to take away, or we want to make it equal to the leftmost two characters. So let's take a look at that. Let's go ahead and hit uh, play. So again, oops, I shouldn't have hit a, a slash. 12, 18. So let's hit backspace. Now there's four characters right now. So if I hit a backspace, it should take only the leftmost two characters, which is 12, and uh, that should be the value. So I'm gonna hit backspace. Now, that's interesting. You notice that it not only took away the character I was deleting, it, it took away a slash, but then for some reason we're left with one character. So we have to investigate a little bit. Let's see here. So let's put a breakpoint right about here. I click this little gray bar here, breakpoint. So if I hit 12, 18, now I'm gonna hit backspace. And it, it did find out that the v, the key code equals the VB key back, the value of eight. So we have hit a backspace and we've stopped right here. The link does not five, uh, is not four, however. So let's hit the play button. Let's hit backspace one more time. Now the length is equal to four. So it is going to go to this next step. So let's see what happens. So I'm gonna hit F8 me.textbox1 is going to be equal to the leftmost two characters. So let's see, it looks like the value is equal to 12. We can take a peek, it is. Now what happens? Let's scooch this a little bit. So if I hit F8, okay, everything looks fine. If I hit F8 to end the sub, 
aha, another character has been deleted. Why is that? Because the backspace key didn't get to actually run through itself until the macro was over. So the key code of eight, which is a backspace, actually threw in a backspace after it did what we asked. So first we asked, hey, um, uh, give us the leftmost two characters. And it said, okay, done. Then when it was over, it said, okay, now I got to run that backspace that we wanted. So it did, and it deleted an extra character. We don't want that. So how do we prevent that? Well, if our conditions are met right here, if the length is four, we want to run a special condition, which is where we want to take the leftmost two characters and shove it in the text box. But after which, we want the key code to be equal to false, which means we don't want you to actually throw in an extra backspace after you run that. So I'm going to paste the word key code equals false. And that is going to negate whatever keystroke was typed, whether it's a one or a D or a backspace. We want to negate that. So we're going to take that away. So the next thing we want to do is test that out, of course, very quickly. 12, 18 backspace. And I'm going to take that off. I'm going to take the breakpoint off. Let's just see what happens. I'm going to hit a backspace. Aha! Uh -huh. Let's do that again. 12, 18 backspace. Now watch, it's going to take away the one and the slash when I hit a backspace via Visual Basic Magic. Now we want to do the same thing if, let's see, 12, 18, 18. So we want to do the same thing if it's, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. So if there are, no, excuse me, seven. If we're right here, there's seven characters and we hit a backspace, we want to take away these two. Or more literally, we want it to keep and retain the leftmost five characters uh, just the way we did it before. So let's double click here. Let's see, if, it's, if the length is four, then we do this. And we'll just copy and paste that here. Oops. Else, else if the length of that is seven, then, and the same same thing here. So let's paste this. Uh, the length, instead of being two, we want it to be whatever, let's see, four minus. So then this would be seven minus two, which is five characters long. And the key code would again be false. Now, why isn't the key code, uh, key code equals false down here? Well, that's when you're typing, right? So if you type the the month of 12 for December, you really want those keystrokes to actually go into the user form, into the text box. If you put key code equals false for every scenario, well then every keystroke you do will be null and void and you won't get to actually type anything into there. So we don't want that. So let's try it. 12, 18, 2018. Backspace, backspace, backspace. Watch it. Backspace, backspace. Takes away both the one and the slash, one backspace, one backspace. That is too cool. Okay, so that is how we create a, a date field, essentially a text box that accepts date input by automatically typing in the slashes. I'll catch you in the next video. Be sure and uh, check out our blog on excelvbasfun.com and um, we'll see you in the next lecture.